Good evening and welcome to St. Mark. Today we celebrate liturgy for the commemoration of all the faithful departed, the Feast of All Souls. Please silence your cell phones as we prepare for Mass. Um, you'll see tonight that we have a very special celebration in your programs that mentions that we're doing special sacred music tonight. So this is going to be different from our normal um, Mass that we have at St. Mark. So there won't be much um, participation in terms of singing from, from the congregation. You'll sing the psalm as usual and, thing, and the alleluia, but the other mass parts, the choir is going to sing a special mass setting tonight um, in honor of the Feast of All Souls. Also a reminder on the way out to pick up one of the All Souls Novena booklets, which the novena starts today and can be prayed after. Please stand and join in praying the prayer to Mary found on the back of your worship aid. O oh, most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Mercy, we entrust the United States of America to your loving care and beg you to reclaim this land for the glory of your son. Overwhelmed with the burden of the sins of our nation, we cry to you from the depths of our hearts and seek refuge in your motherly protection. Look down with mercy upon us, touch the hearts of our people, open our minds to the great worth of human life and to the responsibilities that accompany human freedom. Free us from the falsehoods that lead to abortion and threaten the sanctity of human life. Grant us the peace of the Lord. O merciful Mother, give us the courage to reject the culture of death strength to build a new culture of life. Trusting in your most powerful intercession, we pray. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, our mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word Incarnate, despise not our petition. Thy mercy.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who will that your only begotten Son, having conquered death, should pass over into the realm of heaven, grant, we pray, to your departed servants that with the mortality of this life overcome, they may gaze eternally on you, their Creator and Redeemer, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. 
but they are in peace. For if in the sight of others indeed they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation they shall shine, and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we also await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Mary, the sister of Lazarus, came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave. A stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha the dead man's sister said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowds here, I have said this that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to the crowd, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's interesting that our second reading this evening talks about citizenship with what's going on in our news um, right now. Citizenship is a gift, if you will, granted by the country to whom the person wishes to gain entrance and become a citizen. And citizenship requires certain things. You talk to anybody who has come through um, the gates, if you will, of the United States and then gone through the process and studied and waited months or years and has been received as citizens into the country. And they will tell you that every task, every class, every day of waiting that they experienced was beyond worth it. My brothers and sisters, how much more profoundly worthy is the citizenship we will have and do have in heaven if we abide by the rules and the steps necessary to receive it, to receive that gift, the gift of citizenship of heaven. Yesterday we celebrated, or this weekend, we celebrated the solemnity for all saints, those people, those souls who are in heaven and who abided by the rules and tasks and waiting that God required in order to, be, to fully receive their citizenship in heaven. It was a day in which we honored the saints who are in heaven, not just the ones that the church has officially recognized and canonized on their particular feast day or memorial, but all the saints known only to God. We on earth are not separated from those saints, by the way, in heaven, but we are a part of what the church calls a communion of saints. Now, that's a little bit of a misnomer in the sense that you and I are not as yet saints because the definition of a saint isn't just a holy person, though that's part of it. 
The definition of a saint literally is a soul that is in heaven, a soul that is part of what we call the church triumphant. They have already triumphed over every temptation, over every sin, over every weakness, and they have triumphed mostly by God's grace over Satan. You and I on earth are part of what's known as the church militant. That's a very important word, especially in our day and time. You and I are still here engaged in the battle. We're engaged in spiritual warfare, and therefore we are part of the church militant. The church triumphant has already won the battle, and those saints in heaven pray for us. They root for us, if you will, here in our battle now, so that we can too triumph over Satan, and we can enter into our citizenship in heaven. But there's a third part of the church, and that is the church suffering. Now, you might say, well, gosh, what is it we're doing here? Well, we're militant. We're fighting the battle. Do we suffer? Yes, but that's part of the battle. The church suffering is otherwise known as purgatory. And yes, that too involves some suffering. We don't know what it looks like. There's not very much written about it in terms of the scriptures. We just know that it is a period, a state, if you will, of purification. It is a state of longing, of maybe, if you will, frustration. We know we're going to get to heaven. We know we're saved, but we're not there yet. And so our being separated from God is so tantalizing. It is so um, beautiful. And that, I think, my brothers and sisters, is probably the primary suffering in purgatory. It is for that reason that we gather here this evening, and we've gathered here two other Masses today, which were both beautiful, including the noon Mass, which was in the extraordinary form celebrated by Father Recio. But we are celebrating today this commemoration for all of the faithful departed. Faithful departed. Not rebellious departed, not those who have rejected God until the last moment and have themselves selected hell but those who have been at least at the end like the good thief, but hopefully longer than that. It is an absolute truth that nothing impure can enter heaven. In our first reading from the Book of Wisdom, today we hear, the souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. But it goes on to say this, it says, chastised a little, They shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In order for you and me to get to heaven, we too have to go through a furnace, figurative, real, whatever it is, according to God's providence. Because all of the impurities that we bring with us, even though our sins be forgiven by Christ, all of the impurities that we bring with us at death have to be burnt away, have to be removed. Every hint of sin, or even the attraction to sin, right, which is concupiscence, which is what we inherited from Adam and Eve. We have to let that happen. And if we were able to talk to souls in purgatory, they themselves would not say, oh darn, I'm here, or or, I can't wait to get out. They would say, I don't want to get out until every bit of my impurity, my attraction to sin is burned away. Why? Because they themselves would not want themselves to go into heaven with any impurity. Now this is not the same thing as our final judgment. That happens at the moment of our death when God is going to judge us for our acts, for our thoughts, unrepented, all of that. Purgatory is not a place of judgment, but a place of cleansing. Through the sacrament of confession, of course, we know that our sins are forgiven. But there remains, even after our sins are forgiven, there remains this thing called the temporal punishment from sin. There is damage that we do whenever we sin. Even if it's a tiny little sin, there's damage 
that we and our sin do. And therefore, there is a need for repair. There's a need for that damage to be fixed, if you will. <clears throat> like in a marriage, let's say, when one spouse, sa spouse says or does something that hurts the other, hopefully unintentionally, but the spouse causing the hurt obviously must apologize. And they must acknowledge that they caused hurt. They must apologize sincerely, not flippantly, not like, oh, what do you want from me? I'm sorry, give me a break. Not, that's, that doesn't count. And it doesn't count with God either. Well, I'm a good person. God always forgives. Well, not if we're flippant. The spouse who caused the hurt then needs to be forgiven, right? And so the spouse that has been hurt forgives. That's like absolution. So there's confession and absolution. But there's still some hurt that's left over. That doesn't go away instantly. And so the remaining hurt has to be healed. And that's how it is in our spiritual lives as well. God forgives our sins, yes, instantly, when we repent and we do our penance and so on. But there's still damage that's done. And so even though our sins are totally forgiven in the sacrament, this damage must be healed and repaired. And it is this temporal punishment, this purification, which must be completed before we can get into heaven. But here's the thing. God does all of the heavy lifting. Yes, we have to repair, just like a spouse does, just like a friend does who causes hurt, just like an employee does who causes harm to a company, or an employer who does harm to his employees, and so on. But God does most of the work of this repair, Think of it another way, and I've shared this probably more than once, but I, I just don't know of a better analogy of sort of how purgatory works in terms of God's mercy. So the analogy is like this. You have a little boy <clears throat> who's going to go outside and play ball in his backyard, and the dad says, now remember, don't hit the ball towards the house. You might break a window, right? That's called a commandment, right? So the boy goes out in the backyard and he starts hitting the ball and he forgets, let's say, and he hits the ball towards the house and one of the windows gets shattered. Sin. Disobedience. Right? Now the little boy feels terrible and he knows instantly he wasn't supposed to do that and what he doesn't know is that the dad is sitting in the upstairs window watching all of this. He sees it. So the son has a choice. He can either go in and tell his dad, own up to it, confess, right? Or he can say, ah, he didn't see it. Who broke the window? I don't know, <laughs> right? But he goes in, and he's very sincere, and he feels terrible. He says, Dad, I, I know you told me I wasn't supposed to do this. I know it was wrong. I knew it was wrong, and I did it anyway. And the father can only forgive if that's the case. If the boy had hidden or lied or whatever, authentic forgiveness wouldn't be possible. Not because the father didn't want to, but because the son didn't ask for it. He didn't repent. So the father, seeing how sorry his son was, he accepts his apology. He says, I know, I understand, son. He forgives him, right? That's okay, I forgive you. Absolution. But the window is broken. The window still needs to be repaired. So the father says to his son, all right, tell you what. I'm going to take half of your allowance every week um, to help pay for the window until it's repaired. Son says, okay. You know, he gets it. He doesn't argue. He doesn't fight about it. But the father knows that this is going to be kind of a challenge for the boy, right? And so after a couple of weeks... The father feels bad for him, and he says, tell you what, you've paid enough. I'll take care of the rest. That's purgatory. You and I do this relatively little thing, whether it's penance after our confession or whether it's time in purgatory. We will see clearly in that time that, our, that what God is asking us to do is really nothing. 
even if it were hundreds of years in theory, we would say, that's all you ask of me to repair that damage that I did? We're going to see how loving and merciful God is. So that's the nature of purgatory. We sin, we get it forgiven, we do our little penance, but either in purgatory, the church suffering, or here on earth, we have to repair that damage of our sin. But either way, it is going to be a small price to pay, especially when you think cumulatively of all the sin that we commit throughout our lives. During every single Mass, especially in the Masses in particular where the Roman canon is prayed, the uh, first Eucharistic prayer, as well as in the prayers of the faithful on the weekends, we include, and you'll hear these words if you listen, we include prayers for the dead, prayers for those who have gone before us. Because every single Mass is a perfect prayer, and it is offered for, among other things, the repose of the soul of the souls in the church suffering. The church suffering cannot pray for themselves. They are completely and utterly at the discretion and the mercy of God and at the mercy of us. Why? Because they can't pray for themselves. Can you imagine you're sitting in purgatory and yes, you're, you're you know, counting on God's mercy and you're hoping to be released at, as early as he decides But you know there's all these people down here on earth in the church militant, friends and family and co-workers and people that knew you. And in too many cases, that soul in purgatory looks down and they say, please, please pray a mass for me. You don't understand how little you have to do. God's going to let me out of here if you just pray a mass or whatever the prayer is, right? It seems to us maybe like purgatory should be dreaded or feared. But again, like I said before, it is going to be exactly the opposite. We ourselves will desire purgatory because we ourselves won't want to enter heaven imperfectly. Have you ever heard your grandma or someone else say to you when something bad happens or there's illness or difficulty or setback, they say, offer it up? That's what they mean. We offer our suffering up as reparation for our sin or for the sin of those who are sitting in purgatory. And what a beautiful thing it is we can do for these souls is to not only pray for them, offer masses for them, pray rosaries for them, ask the intercession of the saints, ask the intercession of Mary to assist them to to her son, but also for us to offer our own suffering. And we can do that for ourselves as well. We can offer it for for God to apply it wherever he deems best, even if that's for our own purification and our own shortened time in purgatory. When we understand that there are only saints in heaven, then we understand, as I said this weekend, that we too must become saints. It's our only option. And we can do it either here on earth by accepting our sufferings and offering them to God, or we can do them in purgatory. In other words, right here and right now, in the sacrifice of this Mass, it can be a mechanism, a means of our sanctification, yes, but also our purification. What a blessing and an honor it is for us to be able to celebrate every Mass at least in part for the repose of these souls. And here in particular, this day, every year, to offer this Mass for the commemoration of all the faithful departed. Just imagine when you and I die and we come to the gate, either by way of purgatory or directly into heaven, we're going to meet those people for whom we prayed. We're going to meet those people who, for whom we offered our sufferings and our rosaries and our masses and everything else. Can you imagine how thrilled they are going to be to see us because of what we helped them do, which is to get to heaven? Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. And may the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen.
We believe in the communion of saints. Confident in the act of faith, let us reach out in prayer for all who have passed through death, especially those who need the charity of our intercessions. That members of the church on earth may never forget the church waiting for final glory in eternity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That light and peace will be given to the souls of those who never knew Christ in his life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people who fear death will find hope in the risen Christ and his cleansing forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those among us who mourn a recent loss will be consoled as they pray for the ones they love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the mercy revealed in purgatory will begin our trust in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our masses and prayers will help the souls of the departed relatives and friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord of life, into your care we commend the souls of those who wait to share in the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name. For our good and good of all of this holy church. Receive, Lord, in your kindness the sacrificial offering we make for all your servants who sleep in Christ, that set free from the bonds of death by this singular sacrifice, they may merit eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For even though by our own fault we perish, yet by your compassion and your grace, when seized by death according to our sins, we are redeemed through Christ's great victory and with him called back into life. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, <clears throat> whose faith and devotion are known to you, 
For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace.
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us, also your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso, est tibi Deo Patri omnipotenti, in unitate spiritu sancti, omnes honor et gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other. May the sprinkling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it.
Jesu Christi Fili de Vivi Cui Ex Voluntate Patris Corporante Spiritus Sancto Per Mortum Tuum Mundo Vivit Casti Liberum In Prolog Sacro Sanctum Corpus Et Sanctum Tuum Ab Omnibus In Equitatibus Mei Sed Universis Manus Et Fegni Tui Semper In Honorim Mutati Sed Et Tinum Quam Separare Permitas Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. At this time, Holy Communion will be distributed to you at your seats, whether you wish to receive in the hand or on the tongue. You may stand or kneel as the clergy approach your area. communion antiphon. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even though he dies, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever.
let us pray. Through these sacrificial gifts which we have received, O Lord, bestow on your departed servants your great mercy, and to those you have endowed with the grace of baptism, grant also the fullness of eternal joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Immortal God, Holy Lord, Father and Protector of everything Thou hast created, we raise our hearts to Thee today for those who have passed out of this mortal life. In Thy loving mercy, Father of men, be pleased to receive them into Thy heavenly company and forgive them the failings and faults of human frailty. Thy only Son, Christ our Savior, suffered cruelly that He might deliver them from the second death. By His merits may they share in the glory of His victory over sin and death. We pray for all the faithful who have died, but in particular for those dear to us, parents, relatives, friends. Nor do we forget those who did us good while on earth, who helped us by their prayers, sacrifices, and examples. We pray also for any who have done us harm and stand in need of thy special forgiveness. May the merits of our Virgin Mother Mary and those of all thy angels and saints speak for us and assist them now. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. The Lord be with you. May the God of all consolation bless you, for in his unfathomable goodness he created the human race, and in the resurrection of his only begotten Son he has given believers the hope of rising again. Amen. To us who are alive, may God grant pardon for our sins, and to all who are dead, a place of light and peace. Amen. Amen. So may we all live happily forever with Christ, whom we believe truly rose from the dead. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan 
and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our recessional hymn is Jerusalem, My Happy Home. 